Hi guys, and welcome back to Storytime Society. Um, <laughs> it's so good to see you, or welcome to the Storytime Society. I always say that usually, but hi, welcome to another episode. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so glad that you're alive. I have my latte today because I'm going to need energy. I've been working all day, and... Also, like, simultaneously watching Love is Blind. Like, I'll be, like, I'll work all day on the computer and just, like, have Love is Blind is on. And oof. so I've been, like, crying on and off all day today is basically what I'm trying to say. But I have my latte. I think I did uh, hazelnut and caramel, a combination. And it's good. Um, but, yeah, so I've been working all day. And watching Love or Love is Blind. And I'm like, I just started yesterday morning and I am on the second to last episode. So I'm literally about to finish. And I have yoga at 6.15. So I have to leave by 5.45. It's 4.12 right now as I'm filming. So I have my yoga clothes on and everything. And I'm, as soon as I get done filming this, I'm literally going to watch the second to last episode of Love is Blind. And then I'm going to leave for yoga. But let me tell you, it's, like, crazy how emotional I am. And honestly, sometimes I'm, like, I should be, like, I, I feel like I should be an actress or something because I can literally just, like, think of someone crying and then I start to cry. Like, oh, I can think of someone being sad and then I, like, start to be sad and then cry immediately it's so crazy because especially in tv shows even if no one's crying and it's just like maybe there's a little bit of sad music in the background I will literally like you know when your throat really tenses up and you start like feeling like you're about to cry immediately it makes me start to cry it's actually crazy and even if it's just like a happy moment and it's just like oh cute I will cry like even in the Kardashians I will cry at like the dumbest stuff like they just, like, walk in and hug each other and, like, oh, I love you. I'll literally cry because I'll be, like, oh, my God, it's so sweet that they, like, love each other so much. I have a problem. I really have a problem. I actually found my, like, journal today, and I haven't written in it in a while, but I was, like, reading the, my journal entry from the last time. I usually only write in it when I'm, like, super, super sad and, like, depressed, and, you know, I've been medicated, so, like, I haven't really had I really haven't had like a super, super sad, depressed stint since I've been medicated, I think. I've definitely been like, you know, a little bit sad, but I haven't had like one of those crazy um, outbreaks, which I used to have pretty often, mostly every day. I would like question my life, but I found my journal and I was like reading the last journal entry from, I don't even know when it was, but it was like... A time when me and my boyfriend were, like, fighting and I was, like, so stressed and I am, I was, like, I hate being emotional. Like, I hate being empathetic and emotional. It's honestly not a, <laughs> I was, like, it's honestly not a beautiful thing. It's a terrible thing and it's tiring and it's, I hate it. But, like, when I'm in, like, a state like this, I'm, like, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I think it is a beautiful thing and can get exhausting, but. I do think it's a beautiful thing, but it was just funny reading that um, journal entry because it was, like, so negative. Like, it's ter it's terrible. I hate it. And I was just being so dramatic about it, but um, it's funny to read, like, back on old journals. I still have, like, three journals filled. Like, when I really used to journal, when I was single, I used to, like, really, really journal. And... It, it's just so funny to go back and read those because it's like a lot of them are about my current boyfriend because like we were talking at the time I think and then also like there's some journal entries about my ex-boyfriend before that just like whoop, um talking about how because I was so like at the end of our relationship I've definitely talked about this before but at the end of our relationship I was so like unsure I was so sure but unsure about breaking up with him I like knew for a fact that I would be so much happier without him and not in that relationship anymore because it'd been so long and so grueling of like four years of us being together like on and off and on and off and like just fighting all the time and just so toxic 
and just never knowing like what what place we're in it's like one day we'd be super happy together and then it's like the next day no because he'd always do something like just so stupid and yeah I was like so unsure so I was like writing my journal saying how I really didn't want to hurt his feelings but I just know like in my gut that I just will be so much happier but the thought of like having to actually face him and like break up with him was like the scare like for good was like so scary because I just felt bad and I I knew I wasn't going to be even sad about it. Like, I just knew I wasn't going to be sad about it. I was literally only crying because I, like, felt bad about it, you know? Because I just, like, hate hurting people's feelings, especially, like, something when you're, like, with someone for so long. So, yeah. And then, long story short, we did break up and I, I was not sad at all. And we stayed friends for a long time after that. Obviously, like, I'm in a relationship and he's in a relationship. So we're not, like, friends anymore. And we haven't been for a while. But, yeah. I've literally ever... That one day that I broke up with him, I was so over it after that. And I've never, like, questioned it or had any doubts that, like, it was the right decision to be so real about it sorry I have to make sure that I was recording but yeah um let me just start reading these stories so that we can get on with the episode and okay so the title of the first story is I caught my boyfriend 22 male cheating on me with my best friend and I just found out I'm 20 female pregnant. What now? My boyfriend and I live together and have been for a few years now. Everything has been fine. We both work, a few arguments here and there, regular couple stuff, but we've been doing good, or at least I thought we were. I've met all of his friends and he's met all of mine. There are no issues and everyone gets along great. My best friend and I are very close as well and hang out, call, and text as often as we can as she is also busy doing school. Well, One day she asks for my boyfriend's number so she can give it to her boyfriend because her man wanted to talk to mine about finding work in the area. I told my boyfriend about it and he didn't mind so I gave her his number and everything was fine from there. Things continue as usual. I go to school, work, home, hang out, whatever. He goes to work, hang out, whatever. One day comes around and he's asking me if I can add another sandwich and some more snacks into his lunch bag so that way when he goes to work he won't be as hungry. Claiming that the food I'm giving him is not enough to get him through his shift. I didn't think much about it and did as he said. Weeks go by at this point and nothing is weird or catching my attention. At night I like to straighten up the apartment because I hate waking up to dishes in the sink or any kind of mess, especially because we'll be scrambling to make breakfast and leave to work and won't have any time to clean in the morning. Anyways, on this night, I was cleaning out his lunchbox and getting ready to make his lunch for tomorrow, which I usually make and put in the fridge for him to grab and take the next morning. Well, I'm emptying it and I'm throwing away wrappers. Irrelevant. All of a sudden, I see a half-eaten sandwich there, and I'm confused because he literally told me what I was giving him wasn't enough, but now it seems like too much. I take it out of the bag and there's bite marks on it and a small ring of lipstick on one of the bites. Obviously, my boyfriend doesn't wear lipstick, so I already know a girl was eating the sandwich. I walk into the room and ask him about it and he tells me that he didn't have that much of an appetite today, so he gave it to his female co-worker and she just didn't finish it. I felt off about it, but I didn't say anything about it. A little time goes by and my other friends are noticing weird shit and telling me to keep an eye on my man because he was being weird around my best friend. I had noticed it too. I had noticed weird shit she was doing as well. She was always trying to embarrass me or say something slick randomly that almost felt like she was trying to shade me but would play it off as a joke. She always came to our apartment dressed up and the whole time we're just going to watch a movie in the living room. She always sat beside my boyfriend. If I was on the couch next to him, she was on the other side, so he was in the middle. I felt delusional and like a jealous hater for even caring, and it would start arguments between my boyfriend and I. There's so much more in between that that takes place, 
and makes her sus, but I won't make this too much longer. On the day I found out, I came home and started noticing that my things were running out faster. My perfumes, my lip glosses, hair gels, everything. I didn't understand why, and I had even started using less product on purpose because I thought I was just using too much of whatever. My boyfriend leaves that night to go out with a friend, and I stay home and relax with our cat and two dogs and think nothing of the situation. I get a call from one of my friends, and she's like, is boyfriend's name with you? I told her no. She says, oh, so that is him, and I get confused and ask her to explain. She tells me that some girl with long black hair and a guy that looks like my boyfriend were in a section kikiing, and she was dancing on him, and they were kissing and smoking together, but she wasn't for sure if that could be him. I immediately start calling my boyfriend, but he doesn't answer. I told her to describe the girl more specifically, and she starts describing her outfit, nails, makeup, and everything. I get a light bulb moment, and I go to Insta and check my best friend's page, and as you would have it, she has on everything my friend described, and she had taken a selfie and photos of her in her car before she arrived at the club she was at with my boyfriend. I was hot, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I couldn't even cry because I was so mad. I decided to chill and wait until my boyfriend got home. When he got home, I wasted no time to pop off on him and I confronted him about everything. He denied and denied, but eventually told me the truth. She had texted him one night since she had his number from the time I gave it to her, talking about random things, and over time they just started to have casual combos until it developed into sexual talk, exchanging photos, etc. before they had actually met up in real life. Him and my best friend had been seeing each other for damn near months at this point, and they were hooking up. She'd come to his work when he was on break and eat lunch with him, a.k.a. the shit I was making for him. Obviously, the right thing for me to do is dump him, right? Well, a week or so before I found out about this, I found out I was pregnant. I was still trying to figure out how I would tell him because I wanted it to be a cute moment between us, but obviously that was ruined. I had screamed at him and told him that I was pregnant and that this is how he's treating me and that's how he found out and now he wants to work things out with me and be a family, but I cannot get over him cheating on me with my fucking best friend. I completely stopped talking to her. We did have an argument about it, but I got so fed up and I just blocked her. We live together too, and I feel like that's making things harder for me. I don't know what to do, and I want to put my baby first, but I also want to hope that things can get better and that me and him can move past this. I hate to be someone that gets mad at the girl and does the most, but stays with the man, but I feel hopeless. Oh, sweetie. First of all, she's only 20 years old, which is really sad because... Like, being in a terrible relationship like that where he's... It's obviously... I mean, I don't know. I don't think you can have a perfect, like, relationship and your boyfriend cheats on you with your best friend. Like, you'd have to have seen signs of him acting not like a good boyfriend, right? Like, no good boyfriend would do that. I mean, obviously, I know that there are instances where it's like, he was so perfect... He was too perfect and he cheated on me and everyone is so surprised. Like I've honestly actually had that experience with one of my old roommates in college. Um, We're not friends anymore, but we weren't really uh, like ever friends, honestly. Now that I think of it, we never like really like connected like that, but whatever, that's besides the point. She was with this guy that... Everyone in my school thought was, like, the hottest guy ever. And they had been together since literally, like, high school. Like, so long. At that point, I mean, for us, it was so long. I think, actually, at that point, they had been together for, like, seven years. And we were in college. She was, like, a year older than me. And I think I was, like, 20. She was probably, like, 21. And they had been together for, like, seven years. So they had been together for a long, long time. And I went to a Christian college, so... We had a lot of woe is me men there who think that they are so self-righteous and like the best men ever and like, please, like follow my lead. Like I am so righteous and I love Jesus Christ. And he and her, we thought like, cause they would, they had like the most perfect looking relationship. They had all the Instagram pictures you could ever imagine. The cutest Instagram pictures you could ever imagine. Like, a romance novel and 
when we were like with them, like he was so nice to her, so sweet to her, would always like open the door for her, blah, blah, blah. Well, lo and behold, she went on a missions trip for six months or a year or something. And he like cheated on her a bunch and like literally had basically an emotional affair. But not only that, he also like slept with a girl and like also kissed another girl. And then like also like did all this crazy stuff behind her back that like they told each other they weren't like going to do like drink and stuff. I don't know. That's a, like to me is stupid, but they were like not drinking together and stuff. Not saying, <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I just mean like, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't mean it like that, you know. Um, but yeah, so she didn't find out for a while, but like she came back and they obviously were still together and they were like, they chose to be, they had already like slept together a bunch, but after she came back from the missions trip, obviously she was like feeling a lot more like Christian and she wanted to be more Christian. I don't know. And they both like wanted to be that way. So they both agreed that they were going to like abstain from sex until marriage after that. And lo and behold, like he's literally fucking other girls. So he is not actually as self-righteous or as righteous as you would think and honestly that was like the most surprising thing ever like I was literally shooketh beyond belief and obviously like at that time we were living together and stuff so I was like girl like I was really supportive of her like breaking up with him they broke up obviously and then I was like let's go like take Instagram pictures blah 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 I was trying to hype her up and stuff and then like three days later she gets back together with him and then they have like issues for a while and then there's like a point in time where he's like I actually didn't tell you everything and then he fesses up all this random stuff that he did and like I don't even know exactly what because like at that point she didn't really want to talk about it like that because she like knew that we would not want her to get back together with him but I think she just knew that she would never actually fully break up with him so she didn't want you know when you do that and you're like you don't want to talk to your like mom about it because once you talk to your mom about it like it's over well, that's, like, what happened with her and, like, us. And also, we weren't that close. So, like, I didn't really expect her. I don't know if she, like, told her, like, best friends or not. But, yeah, they're married with a kid now. So, I mean, God bless them. But that was crazy to me, honestly. To me, so, so for real. Okay. But anyways, that is a very sidetracked story. But some of the comments are saying, don't stay with him, but decide what you want to do with the pregnancy, most important part. And that's, I don't know if I got to finish my statement, but I agree. I don't think that she should stay with him. I think that she should figure out if she wants to keep the baby or if she wants to maybe put it up for adoption or get an abortion or whatever she chooses to do. And then I think break up with him for sure, for good. Goodbye. You, ugh. I wish people like could see into the future that they would be so much better off with this per like without this person because you're going to be better off with a person that does you like that. Like, no matter what, no matter if you think you love them so, or if you do love them so much, it doesn't matter. Like, you will be better off if a person cheats on you, and especially with your best friend, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt. Like, I truly just think that, like, if someone cheats on you, I mean you do you I support whatever you want to choose but in my opinion I think that no matter what you will be happier if you break up because you're only going to be like so anxious and have to like really really try so hard to like get over that while being with this person and it's going to always get like brought up in your mind you're always going to think about it even like fights me and my boyfriend get in like I think about them like two years ago maybe like a fight that we got in like I'll think about it once in a while and I'll be like and I'll get re-mad over it so like if he cheated on me I would never get over it and I would be so insecure for the rest of our relationship and you don't want to be with someone that is gonna you're gonna be insecure with even if they never cheat on you again like the chances of you being happy with them or finding someone new that you'll be happy with and will be faithful I think that you will be so much happier like with a new person in the future that will be faithful to you than this person that did you so wrong. Staying in a broken relationship does not help any child. These are more comments, by the way. 
Children of broken, broken homes have issues. Children of people who stay together for the child have just as many leave. Yes, I literally always say that. Like, I have always said that. I think staying together is all, all, honestly worse than just breaking up. Like, I truly think it's so silly when people are like, oh, we're staying together for the kids. Like, no, the kids don't want you to stay together if you're going to be showing them a toxic relationship. Like, how about you just separate and then you find out how to co-parent in the best way possible and don't talk to your kid about it and just, you know, go talk shit about him with your friends and then show your kid a good example of how, like, your parents can be broken up but still get along, even if you hate them. I mean, I'm not perfect and I've never had a kid and never had been in that situation. So obviously, like, it's easier said than done. But that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. What is that? TikTok? I think that's what it is. That's my opinion. Okay. Next story. Let's do... I'm like... Let's just do this one because this one has updates and stuff, I think. Actually, it just has one update, but I want to read a story that has an update. Okay. The next story. Am I the asshole for considering postponing my wedding after I saw how my fiancé talks about me in his group chat? Hi, everyone. I hope you guys can give me some insight and help with this situation. Me... 24 female, and my soon-to-be husband, 24 male, have been together since we were both 17. He was my first everything, first boyfriend, first kiss. He took my virginity, literally my first for everything. He proposed after I graduated nursing school, and I've never been happier. I know everyone says this, but there's literally been zero problems and zero red flags. I wanted to play this game he has on his iPad because I've been, become borderline addicted to it. As I was playing it, I saw a text from his group chat pop up. I ignored it, and then another came up with one of his friends saying, I'd marry BJQ. I got confused, so I decided to open it. This group chat is only men. Some are my childhood friends, too, and we hang out with these people, like, multiple times a week. My husband sent a pros and cons list about me. I copied it, sent it to me, and deleted the evidence. Here's the list. Pros. Sexually eager and blowjobs whenever I want. Big tits, big ass, big thighs, and a flat stomach. Doesn't let herself become frumpy and ugly. Funny and smart. Good cook and baker. Cons. Has a lot of animals. Doesn't always keep our place clean. Laughs too loud. Vulgar and crude. Has bad breath in the mornings. Spends too much time at the gym. Is that list that bad? It made my stomach drop. And I've felt like this impending dread ever since discovering it. The cons aren't that bad, but it feels so objectifying with the pros list. And as I scrolled up and read more, the worse it got. He talked to them about how he thinks I lied about being a virgin when we met because I'm too eager and wanting to try too many things. And even bragged about how he has a folder on his phone of videos and photos of me and us. Everybody dared him to send it, but he said no. How can I be sure he didn't send it anyways and deleted the evidence? He even talked about how there was a week he tested to see how many blowjobs he could get out of me by simply asking for them and decided to stop because he started to feel bad. There was more, but I can't write it out. I feel so gross and sad. I talk about him in such a different way. It feels like he only sees me as a sex object and I can see him as and I see him as my other half. I've opted out of friend hangouts and I've distanced myself from him. He's noticed and has been trying to figure out what's wrong, but I'm not even ready to tell him. I want to postpone our wedding until we can figure this out or if it's even salvageable. Am I overreacting? Please, any and all advice is welcomed. Edit, the response has been overwhelming. I have never used Reddit before and opted to use my friend's account and wow, I really wasn't expecting this. I appreciate all of your guys' advice and input. Truly, this means a lot. I'll try to update when I can. But again, thank you all. (laughs) I'm crying. I'm so sorry. Like, that's not funny. Obviously, that's extremely hurtful. But reading the pros and cons list, it sounds like you're talking to a 13-year-old boy that's balls literally just dropped. Like, that's actually an insane statement. The fact that he even feels comfortable sending that to his friends, like, let, like, I'm all for 
talking in the group chat. I mean, obviously, I don't think talking like about your fiance that in depth in the group chat is okay. Like, I think it's fine to vent to your friends and be like, oh, yeah, we got in a fight about this, like, and get advice and stuff. But like, and like, you can also, I don't know, like, I, in a respectful manner, obviously. But it's like, are you kidding me you're gonna talk about someone that you're about to marry like they literally are like your situationship it seems like she big tits big ass big thighs and a flat stomach doesn't let her self become frumpy and ugly oh and she has bad breath in the mornings but like don't you i'm sure your breath fucking smells like ass too everyone has bad breath oh what is she supposed to wake up before you and put a mint in so that her breath can be minty fresh for you when you wake up Oh my god. And she doesn't keep your place clean. How about you pick up a fucking dish once in a while? Because I'm sure you're so damn lazy and you don't do shit. <sighs> Laughs too loud. Oh my god. She thinks you're funny. Wow. You should just die. You should just like break up with her because that's so terrible. I'm literally crying. Spends too much time at the gym. Wow. Wow. She wants to take care of herself and be in good health. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. She should be at home sucking your penis. She can't spend that much time at the gym. She needs to spend that time in the bedroom with you, right? Right? Apparently. Because all you see her as is a literal blow-up doll. Like, you might as well just go get one of those at freaking Hollywood, the Hollywood store, you know? The Hollywood Hustler store or whatever. I've heard those can do you really well if you really want it. Like, go get a flashlight, maybe. I don't know. Your wife or your soon-to-be wife is not a flashlight. Hate to break it to you, but she's actually a human being. And you're clearly not ready to get married, and that's actually insane to me. Sorry. But that this is the craziest this is the craziest thing. I, if I found my boyfriend talking about me like that, <gasps> first of all. The things I would do, the Nair and his shampoo, the, I don't even know what a, I would look up any, how to get revenge on Google. And that I would be going through the list, like <laughs> point blank. And then I'd be out of here breaking up with him. Also have fun paying the rent all by yourself. Like it would be so over and done. I can't even tell you. Like, obviously, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's so hard because in these situations, it's like you're in a relationship with someone. Obviously, you're about to marry them. You clearly think that, like, you want to be with them for the rest of your life. So it's like when you look at something like this, it's like, oh, well, he didn't cheat on me. But it's like, I just can't believe that someone would ever think that was okay to talk about someone like that. And to think that you're soon-to-be husband thinks about you in this way is genuinely just, like, so disgusting. Oh, my God. I can't even, like, I can't even express how I feel about that. But we're going to read the update. And I'm honestly scared, but also excited to see what happens. Okay. Update. Am I the asshole for considering postponing my wedding after I saw how my fiance talks about me in his group chat? I wanted to say thank you to everyone that gave me their advice and input and also a thank you to my friend for letting me post on her Reddit account. I've never even used Reddit so this whole experience has been wild. She suggested I use it due to her using it and told me she got a lot of great legal advice as well as emotional support so again thank you all. Anyways, my soon-to-be ex left for a work-related trip and won't be returning till the 7th. I decided to go through his iPad even more and found things that were absolutely appalling. I can't even believe I considered staying. You all opened my eyes and what I found really solidified it. I searched the group chat more. They didn't talk about me a whole lot, but every time they did, it was so degrading and wildly inappropriate. I found out it was my soon-to-be ex that coined me as BJQ, and I was right. He has sent videos of me. It was just videos of me performing oral, but still, I wanted those to stay between us. I also found his ex and Reddit account. It's nothing but gangbang porn and cuck fetish porn. All of the porn is one girl and multiple men. I don't want to read too much into that, but with how everything is falling... I'm scared he was going to try to share me with the men in his group chat, which, yes, I am open-minded, but 
I am firm on no threesomes and no sharing of any sort. He knows this. I also found out he calls me Butterface. He constantly complains that I don't lean into my femininity and dress more girly. He said he hates my tattoos and piercings and said they're excessive. There's so much more and I'm just devastated. I don't even know where to begin. I don't want to tell my family because I'm so humiliated and sad. Do I collect evidence from his iPad and take it to a lawyer? Do I start moving out while he's away? I'm just so lost right now. Thank you to everybody that opened my eyes. I mean, I'm not even surprised by any of that. Like, yep, he's probably, maybe you should search up OnlyFans in his email account because he probably is subscribed to a few of those. And I guarantee it, honestly, at this point, he seems like a man that would probably have many, he's probably paying many women's rent by being subscribed to their OnlyFans. That is just like, I can't. Some of the comments, not the asshole, and Ron, I hope you realize that him sharing those videos with his friends is incredibly illegal in the beginning of his trafficking you to him. I would send all the evidence for myself and move out if you don't own the place and press charges. I understand you may still love him, but he is not going to be, get better. He doesn't see you as human. OP, you need to consult a lawyer. It's better to understand your legal rights and options, especially if you're considering ending the engagement or if there are shared assets or financial matters involved. The evidence OP found on his iPad could be crucial if you decide to take legal action. Take screenshots or photos of the relevant messages, videos, and accounts. Email everything to yourself. You need hard copies, no screenshots. Yes, it's better to make copies of the data on his iPad and immediately call the police. Make a backup on your computer. Then pack up and leave before he gets back. OP should also email it to a trusted friend and to their lawyer after hiring one. Abusers have destroyed phones and computers to get rid of evidence. Be very careful regarding the pics and videos you send via email or text. You could inadvertently break the law also. OP, pack up. Call the police. Contact the local domestic violence organizations to help you plan a safe exit and learn what resources are available to you. Yeah, honestly, at that point, like, you own his iPad. You don't even need to send yourself screenshots. Take the iPad and go because all of your private pictures and videos are being sent and distributed to people that you did not consent to. So at that point, you literally own that iPad. Just take it. Like, what is he going to say? Give me back or I'm calling the police. Call the police. I'll show them like what you literally sent your friends of me. So. Okay, let's see. We're going to move on from that. Because I think I said all that I can say about that. <sighs> Disgusting. Honestly. Disgusting. Okay. Let's read this one. It's really short, but I just kind of want to see. <laughs> all right. My friend, 39 female, and husband, 37 male, had started an exclusive friendship. Am I being dramatic about it? Thank you for all your responses. I didn't realize that. I forgot to mention... Oh, sorry. Um, that, that should be at the bottom because I don't think I should read that before. Okay, the story goes. Am I being overdramatic for feeling disrespected by my friend for allowing herself the liberty of becoming close with my husband? It's been going on for about five years now. I have always felt that it's inappropriate and experienced feelings of betrayal of the trust in the friendship. She did become reliant on him emotionally at one stage, but I put my foot down on that because it crossed a marital boundary. I have tried to put my feelings aside about it and compromised on my well-being for the sake of my relationship with my husband as he finds this friendship important to him. There is no attraction from his side or hers, and it's become pretty platonic now after I stepped in a couple years ago. But I still find it disrespectful and am challenged by maintaining a friendship with her. I feel like I am dishonoring my integrity by continuing to show up emotionally and fully for her. I'd love some outside input, thoughts, feedback, advice. Thank you for all of your responses. I didn't realize that I forgot to mention that she lives in a different city, so their communication is primarily via voice notes and messages. They have not spent physical alone time together. I've always been there. We all have children. She is single, however. Girl. No. What? No. I cannot. You don't. Don't be friends with. I would be like, no. Like, what? 
Oh my God, I can't. If that were me and it was my friend and my husband, I'd be like, you can literally, like, you can talk to her when she's here and, like, that's it. And obviously you can be, like, nice to her and, like, be friends with her when I'm there. But, like, there's no, there's not a necessity for you to be sending voice notes and being in a, also her saying that, like, it's platonic now that she stepped in. What, it wasn't platonic before? What do you mean? I don't understand. <sighs> it sounds gross. Like, not to say that, uh, like, your your husband isn't allowed to have other friends, but it's like, it seems like it's a little bit, it's overstepping a, a boundary here. Some of the comments are saying, what is an exclusive friendship? Do you intend to say that your friend is his friend, not through you anymore? For instance, hypothetically, if you were to divorce your husband, your friend would cut all contact in earlier scenario, but now she's a common friend, something like that. I have never heard of the term. Yes, more details are needed, but your husband should certainly not be your friend's main source of emotional support. Yeah, what the fuck? I wish I could see this t uh, thing that she said, but she deleted it, I think. Unless your husband is an emotional support pet, he is an idiot. Your husband is lying and they are having an affair. This woman is not your friend. Your husband is not a good partner. Just because you can resist the devil doesn't mean you should be friends. An emotional connection is way more concerning than a physical one. He can't have you both in his life. That's not fair to you. She has to go from both of your lives because she is a bitch. You didn't step in and make it platonic. He hid his affair better. You may never get concrete evidence, so the friendship has to end, period. Honestly, the marriage has to end at this point. Like, if that's all true, which obviously I don't know, like, they could really truly just be platonic friends, but, like, I feel like, bye divorce so your husband and so-called friend is having an emotional affair or more that neither one wants to give up i feel like you're underreacting honestly i feel like i'm underreacting too and you're totally right honestly i'm surprised you lasted five years dealing with this your friend isn't being a friend to you listen to your gut your husband should have distanced himself from the moment you expressed discomfort you shouldn't have to put your foot down because it shouldn't have even gone that far jesus that's literally so true I could not agree more with that sentiment. Also, I'm looking on my... Wait. <sighs> Sorry, I had to look on my... Camera to see. I thought it said two minutes, but it says 20 minutes. So don't... don't. I was, like, nervous. But... Okay, some of the other comments. She is not your friend. You should have cut her off after she became reliant on him emotionally and you had to step in to make things platonic. She is being inappropriate and using both you and your husband. Also, your husband should have stepped back a while ago and not picked other friendships over the peace, safety, and security of his marriage. Distance yourself away. Husbands need to stop too. Honestly, reading stuff like this, I'm like, it makes me so grateful for my boyfriend because my boyfriend is just so like so such a little angel like he just keeps to himself he's like so not dramatic he's like so easygoing he literally does nothing wrong ever other than like sometimes maybe he annoys me a little bit <laughs> but like I can't believe that people are with like after reading honestly the this whole episode like reading these stories and like how are there even people like that? Like, how are you even alive? Like, how? I don't understand. And why are you in a relationship? Because truly, like, you shouldn't be. This is, like, ugh, I feel like the theme of this episode is, like, men literally suck punani. For real. I can't even remember what the first story was that I told at this point because I'm so traumatized by all of these stories like oh that was the cheating on my best friend and just found out oh yep okay so yeah this is that's the theme of this episode men literally suck punani and i'm not sorry about it at all other than my boyfriend and if he proves me wrong i will let you guys know but at this point in time, he is excluded from 
that statement because he's a nice man and he means well all right let's see this is a not relationship story so I'm like should I tell a not relationship story because I feel like the at this point the let's read this one actually because this is a relationship story Will I be the asshole if I, 30 female, texted my sister's 24 female cheating fiancé, 27 male, to leave her alone and never contact her or her, my family again? Backstory, my sister, 24 female, has been with the same partner, 27 male, for just over five years. Our family has always been unsure that this man was the best match for my sister, but she was adamant he is the one, so we've been supportive of her choice to date him. About a year ago, his work gave him notice he would need to relocate across the country. He had six months to move from the notice date, and his company offered a relocation package to help with his move. In the fine print, my sister noted the package would increase in value slightly if he was married to help offset the cost of moving a family. My sister viewed this as the perfect financial jumpstart for the next stage of their relationship, marriage. They had been together for four years, and at this point... And from all outsiders, he seemed very much in love with her. He constantly kept telling her, you're the one. My future is with you. Showering her in gifts, sweet things like that. She started pushing him to propose ASAP as she wanted at least three-month engagement to squeeze in a photo shoot and a bridal shower. This is the beginning of the parade of red flags from him. At first, he seemed all in on, the, on this plan. At first, he seemed all in on this plan. He would verbally affirm he was looking at rings and tell her daily he couldn't wait to marry her. As the next couple months passed, the excuses started to come. Many were the classic work assigned me a big job, so I'm going to be working late, and this move has made me so stressed. Both are valid, but instead of him turning to his partner, my sister, to help him with the stress, he started to grow more distant. He also said alarming things like, wow, the rings are expensive. I'm not sure this is worth the investment and once made a comment that he wasn't sure anymore. He wanted to cut off the possibility of ever seeing another woman. I personally would have dumped him then and there, but my sister, the ever... My sister, the ever hopeless romantic, wanted to work at this relationship and hoped that he one day realized she was worth the investment. When the five-month mark rolled around, my sister started to panic that she was losing him. I genuinely don't think that she even considered that he wouldn't propose. When she confronted him about this obvious growing distant when she confronted him about his obvious growing disinterest in marrying her and their relationship as a whole, he rebuttaled with, I want to marry you, but now isn't the right time. He convinced her to give long distance with him a try, and she eagerly agreed. At month six, he moved without her. They go long distance for seven months. They go long distance for seven months. From what she would tell me, he was distant at times, but still sending gifts and money. He would visit usually every six weeks and seemed genuinely thrilled to see her. During this entire period, my sister was fixated on them getting engaged. The, mo the motivation for engagement shifted from a practical "let's use your work's money to help start our life" to an emotional "I need you to." I need you to propose to show me you are genuinely in love with me and invested in this relationship. He came back to visit this past weekend to spend time with our family and take my sister away on a quick trip. To all our surprise, he finally proposed. My sister was over the moon. I wasn't thrilled because something had always smelled off about this man, but if she was happy, I was happy. Now I can't make this next part up. The next day, my sister's close friend, who used to be my sister's now fiancé's co-worker, called me furious. Another old co-worker of hers and of my sister's fiancé called her after seeing the engagement pics online. The old co-worker told the friend that she has been seeing the fiancé on and off for some years and have been in a full-blown relationship for the past three months. The wild part is, this girl lives in the same town as my sister. My sister's fiancé had been seeing this woman in addition to my sister every time he came to visit. Literally hours before picking up my sister to take her away on the proposal trip, he slept with this woman and was telling her he was in love with her. The old co-workers sent screenshots of their chats, receipts of gifts he had sent, and photos of them together to the friend as proof. 
My sister's friend called to let me know she, along with other friends, were heading to my sister's apartment to stop him before he left for his flight. In the end, they did stop him and got him to confess about the chronic cheating. My sister was destroyed. Her friend stayed with her all night, and her fiancé left with his tail tucked. I thought that was the end of it, but it's not. Ever the silver tongue, the fiancé has started spinning a story to my sister that he made a huge mistake and always saw her as endgame. He is offering to pay for her to move in with him and has sent her a huge gift as an apology. This man is now a proven manipulator and using my sister's fear of being alone to get her back. I'm at a point where I'm thinking of stepping in and texting him to leave her alone. I know on paper this should be between her and the fiancé, but it doesn't sit right with me to let the wolf who lost his sheep cloak prey on my younger sister. Will I be the asshole to text him? If not, I'm hoping to recruit the brilliant minds of Reddit to help me write a subtle, a subtle yet highly insulting text to get my point across on how unwelcome he is. Um, I don't think you'd be the asshole. I don't, I don't know how much that would really help though, because I feel like the sister will still, or the, I feel like this guy will still talk to her. Like, I don't think he's going to listen to you, to be honest. So like, I don't really know. Maybe there needs to be like, maybe you need to block him from your sister's phone secretly. So she thinks that he just like never talked to her again, to be honest. Okay, some of the comments. You would not be the asshole for texting him, but I recommend a different approach. Instead of texting him, consider talking to your sister directly and expressing your concerns about him. Offer your support and help her see through his manipulation. If she's open to it, you could even help her block his number and social media accounts to create some distance. Ultimately, the decision rests with her, but your love and support will be invaluable during this difficult time. Wow, that's some next level manipulation and cheating. I'm glad your sister didn't end up married to that scumbag. But can we also appreciate the level of detective work her friend did? Sherlock Holmes who? If your sister hasn't seen enough now to leave him, she never will. All you will accomplish if you butt into this is possibly losing your sister for a very long time. As they say, love is a drug and those addicted to it are blind to all the red flags. You wouldn't be the asshole for wanting to protect your sister, but it's important to discuss this with her first. If she agrees, a firm message telling him to stay away is appropriate. Ultimately, support her in making her own decisions. That's true. Support your sister. Don't text him. Oh, man. No, do not text him. You have no control over anyone's actions or choices but your own. Just support your sister. Texting him won't accomplish that. I don't know, guys. I mean, I would agree. Like, I agree with these sound mind people, but I'm trying to say from, like, my point of view, if it were my sister and I were in this situation, I would definitely, I'd be calling him and being like, you fucking motherfucker. Like, I'd be going crazy. So I can't say that, like, don't do it or you would be the asshole because, girl, I would do it too. And not for a check, like, for free. All right, well, I think that's the end because I have to get ready to be leaving for yoga soon, but I think that was a good episode of, like, literally the worst men in the world, the smallest man who ever lived, and I don't even listen to Taylor Swift, but these are those, these are those men if there ever was. Um, but I love you guys so much and I really appreciate you guys for watching and I appreciate, I appreciate you guys for listening to me yap and blabber my mouth all the time. Like, I wish I could just hug you all like this in a big like group, you know, only if you guys wanted, (laughs) of course, but, um, yeah, I love you and I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you really enjoyed. Please let me know what you think. Obviously, comment. Let me know what you think of these stories. I mean, I feel like this is going to get the girls riled up, you know? Like, it got me riled up, honestly. Like, I'm like, I'm about to, like, be mad and lock my my boyfriend out when he comes home from work. Like, why would you be involved in this? Why would you be the same gender as these people? Like, it's honestly hurtful that you would be even in the same category like the fact that you're a man and these are men and in that way that makes you guilty but okay goodbye I love you Mwah.